the cloud has changed the way organizations solve their business challenges and how application systems are designed. We usually say is whenever we talk to our customers regarding cloud, we should go with the cloud native approach or approach by which we can think cloud while architecting. The role of solution architect is not only a uh, only to deliver business value through the functional requirements of the application, but also figure out the non-functional requirements and uh, inform that to the customer, get it validated and approved. With cloud, we can easily achieve all those non-functional requirements. It's also to ensure that the solution is designed in ways that are scalable, resilient, efficient, and secure, which falls under non-functional requirements. Solution architecture is concerned with the planning, design, implementation, and ongoing improvement of technology system. It doesn't stop once the architecture is done. It is there. It is more of a in an agile fashion, we have to keep on improving the technology system. It's a continuous improvement with the continuous feedback and keeping the data uh, track. The architecture of a system uh, must balance and align the business requirement with the technical capabilities that are needed to execute those requirements. The finished architecture is a balance of risk cost and capability throughout the system and its components. And to do or to perform all these tasks that we are talking high level, there are certain guidelines and or principles provided by the Microsoft with the name Azure Well Architecture Framework so that we can balance our architecture, our, our uh, idea on those uh, guidelines of the framework to see if we are missing anything or how we can make it better. Here is no one size fit all approach to designing an architecture, but there are some universal concepts that will apply, apply regardless of the architecture, technology or cloud provider. Ultimately, it's a balanced approach as per the requirement of the customer because you can create an amazing architecture with the full secure and everything, but somebody has to pay for it, right? So cost needed to be a part of well architected framework guidelines and balance is needed. So let's quickly check the principles of well architected framework provided by Microsoft for Azure Solutions Architect. And these are the pillars. Reliability, security, cost optimization, operational excellence, performance efficiency. All these five pillars will help you balance your architecture, will help you find out if you're missing something, will help you make your architecture better. So, <clears throat> It's not that simple like reliability is ability of a system to recover from failure. That's what it means, but how to achieve that? It goes pretty detailed that will cover each pillar one by one in upcoming videos. For now, it's an overview, the high level overview of WAF or well architected framework. So let's talk about uh, our reliability a little bit because Every architect's worst fear is having an architecture fail with no way to recover it. A successful cloud environment is designed in a way that anticipates failure at all levels. Part of anticipating failure is designing a system that can recover from failures within the time that your stakeholders and customer require. Gotta meet the SLAs, you need to think each and every point of your architecture should be reliable. Security. <clears throat> Security is needed everywhere. We all know that. But here we are talking about architecture, Azure architecture. So 
what actually are we trying to secure here? Well, the answer is data. If you're following the other videos on my channel, you'll see I have covered a lot on security. There is also an ongoing series on cybersecurity architect. So we are already covering security a lot, but for WAF, data is the most valuable piece of any organizational technical footprint. In this pillar, we'll focus on securing access to our architecture through authentication and protecting our application and data from network vulnerabilities. Nowadays, zero trust security framework is something which will help you to make your environment secure as per the today's need. If you wanna know a little more about Zero Trust, you can check other videos in the same, on the same channel. There is a huge playlist on Zero Trust. We should protect the integrity of our data too through tools like encryption. We must think about security throughput uh, throughout uh, the entire life cycle of your application from design and implementation to deployment and operations. It is not always like once your architecture is approved from the security perspective, then you are done, you're through. No, you have to keep on checking the recommendations under uh, Microsoft Defender or it used to be Azure Security Center. Keep on checking. Maybe you have deployed a new VM, uh, not following the IAC and it, ha it doesn't have all those things like anti-malware or any port is open now because somebody wants to talk to that particular machine or anything from on-premises. So you have to keep on uh, checking the recommendation through security center. It's an ongoing uh, thing. Security is not a one-time thing, just like any other pillars now. That's why I said at the very beginning, by keeping cloud in mind, keeping cloud uh, native approach in mind, because cloud, provides protections against a variety of threats such as network intrusion and DDoS attacks. You can have your own appliances like network virtual appliance to make it work. You can also use the past services provided by Azure like Azure Firewall. DDoS basic is already implemented, but you can also opt for the standard, which is costly of course, but it has its own benefits. But still, you need to build security in your application, your processes, your organizational culture. Securing only your cloud infrastructure wouldn't help. You have to secure it from all the points which are involved. Now, somebody is paying for all those things. So there is, it's, it's, a, it's something that we need to keep in mind. Hence, cost effective or cost optimization. We need to identify inefficiency and waste in our uh, cloud spending to ensure we are spending money where we can make the greatest use of it. The point is cloud is an open ground and anyone can create anything. And cloud doesn't, cloud work as, or, on OPEX model. So whatever you're creating, there is a cost involved. And it is the main pain point of most of the customer who are on the cloud without actually knowing how cloud works. So cost optimization, you always need to keep in mind and choose the right technology, the right sizing and stop wasting and stop inefficiency of your uh, resources. So cost optimization is one of the strongest pillar. Now, operational excellence. <clears throat> By taking advantage of modern de development practices like DevOps, we can enable faster development and deployment cycles. We need to have a good monitoring architecture in place so that we can detect failures and problems before they happen or at minimum before customer notices and calls us. And automation is the key aspect of the pillar to remove variance or error while increasing operational. And the last one is performance efficiency. For an architecture to perform well and be scalable, it should properly match resource capacity to demand. Traditionally, cloud architectures accomplish this balance by scaling applications dynamically based on the activity in the application. 
demand for services changes, so it's important for your architecture to be able to adjust to demand. Here we are talking about auto scaling, like VMSs or the PaaS services. This will help us to uh, achieve this pillar to some extent. So by designing your architecture with performance and scalability in mind, you'll provide a great experience for your customer while being cost effective. Because this is not only the scalability, it's also the elasticity. When you need more VMs, there are more VMs are running. As the load goes down, there are less VMs are running. So you are saving cost and balancing the load. So these are, this is the general idea about all those five pillars of Azure Well Architected Framework. However, we are going to dig pretty deep on each of these uh, pillars, including design principles and the checklist. So let's see some general design principles here. <clears throat> In addition to each of these pillars, there are some consistent design principles that we should consider throughout our architecture. For example, no architecture is static. Allow for the evolution of your architecture by taking advantage of new services, tools, and technologies when they are available. As I was saying at the beginning, be agile even in creation of your architecture. There should be a scope where we can have the ability to expand and contract in our architecture without impacting the workloads. Collect data, which is the new gold. Collect data, analyze it, and use it to make decisions surrounding your architecture from cost data to performance to user load. Using data will guide you to make the right choice in your environment. Cloud technology evolves quickly. Educate your development operations and business teams to help them make the right decisions and build solutions to solve business problems. And automation of manual activities, reduce operational costs, minimize error introduced by manual steps and provide consistency between the environments. So these are some general guiding principles, but for each pillars, we do have other principles, design principles that we'll see. So in, in an ideal architecture, we would build the most secure, high performance, highly available and efficient environment possible. However, as with everything, there are trade-offs. To build an environment with the highest level of these pillars, there's a cost. That cost might be in money, time to deliver, or operational agility. Every organization will have different priorities that will affect the design choices that are made in each pillar. As you design your architecture, you will need to determine which trade-offs are acceptable and which are not. And of course, be transparent when you talk to your customer, you present your design. And once we have the approval, we can go ahead with our architecture. Well, thank you for watching. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.